What's going on everybody? Welcome back to an all new video today. And today we're going to be making a drive through system. So here's a little test on how it works before we even get into it. So first of all, this can work if they're in a vehicle, uh, but for this purpose, I'm just going to be walking it or running it. So a little GUI pops up and let's order, let's order everything actually on the menu. So these six items and submit the order and we're going to pull forward. Now the thing about this is I'm going to code it to where it's fully customizable for you guys. I'm going to pull up to the window and as soon as we pull up to the window, we're going to get this random wait time, which is please wait while your food is being prepared and you can have an NPC there. And there we go. Thank you. Enjoy your meal. Please pull forward. And there is the six items that I just ordered. And that GUI will go away. Now, the only reason why I teleported here was because of the I selected the food items because these are just Roblox food items. But these are the six items that we did order. And it's fully customizable. I can show you guys how to add money taking, money giving. You can add multiple windows like in real life. Uh, depends on where you live what you experience with the multiple windows you can also add where it displays your order you can add all that so without further ado let's get into the video all right so the first thing you're going to want to do is insert your actual restaurant slash drive through so we're going to search up restaurant so in advance guys i do apologize for any background noise you do here in the video as it is kind of hard to record uh, when everything is happening outside so we're going to go ahead and find something like we did in the video it's right here hot and fresh pizza let's find this restaurant right here and it's awesome so this is a perfect drive through example and so we have this model here so now that we have this model this is the actual model itself so I'm just going to delete this delete all that delete all the stuff we don't want so we have this restaurant model, and what we're going to do is we're going to ungroup it. So depending on what computer you have, that may take a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in right here. And this is where we do want the trigger part. So we're going to go and create a part here. And we're going to name this part Start Sensor. Now, for the purposes of this video, you can name it whatever you want. Do apologize if you can hear any fans in the back. And we're gonna go ahead and now you guys can place this wherever you want, wherever you want the, the little GUI to show up for them to order. So I'm gonna put mine a little bit right here. And we're gonna go ahead and set the transparency to one, anchor it, and collide can collide. Now an important thing to realize is when you turn off can collide and anchoring meaning that this part will fall forever so either have anchored or can collide on because if i had can collide off and anchored off it would just fall through the bottom because it can't collide with anything so once we have the start sensor we're going to go ahead and insert the end sensor now you guys can have a mid sensor for if you guys have a second window but for the purposes of this drive through we're going to go ahead and name it an end sensor and we're going to go ahead and put that end sensor right here. The computer fans are already acting up and it hasn't even been two minutes into this video. We're going to go ahead and place it right here. So that way cars can go around. And they'll get it when they come right here. It doesn't matter how thick it is. Just do the start and end point where you want the block to be. I'm going to name it end sensor. And we're going to go ahead and group these two together. We're going to go ahead and name it. Now the name doesn't matter. I'm just going to name it the drive through system. And now we have our drive through system. And this is where everything will go down. Okay, so once you do have that drive through system model, you're basically going to have two parts. Insert a script. Now the script name, of course, does not matter because we're not going to be referencing it. But I'm just going to name it that. I'm going to insert a script into here. We're going to go ahead and get started with that start sensor script. And we're going to go right into it. 
b equals instance and feel free to change things up you know and we're going to insert a bool bool values are true false they can only be one or two things true or false uh, they're mostly it, the name. The name actually means boolean, uh, but everybody just calls them bool values. So order. And I'll explain what this means. If you guys don't know how to change the color of your actual script, you guys can actually go into the settings. Uh, you go to file and settings and then you should find it in studio strip uh, script color actually a lot of people actually didn't know that so what this is this is a function by itself and we're gonna go ahead and start saying if not player so this is always how you're going to give the this is always how you're gonna give a GUI to a player so what this is right now is inserting a bool value and what this bool value basically is it's a right here it's a bool value and this bool value is going to be the player so when we do insert an instance the instance is going to be the player oh, I'm sorry and we're gonna actually parent it the other way not if not means if they don't now if the player does not have wait for child order in progress dot value if their bool is not true so if it's false I did not true now you're probably wondering like why wouldn't I just put false because this is saying if they even if they even have order in progress so that's a way of doing it Because the script would get confused if you're saying if it's false, because why not just say if they if they have it or if it's true. So I'm gonna do order GUI. And you're like, where do we get? I'll cover everything. So where do we get order GUI from? We're gonna create an order GUI. And actually that's tough to script, so I'm going to leave a link to that model in the description. You're like, well, why are we, why are we worrying about the B? The B isn't even the child of the player yet. Don't worry, we're gonna do that in this function. So this is a function. So basically, if I put this into a script right now, which it is, and if I played this function, will not work. I mean, it'll work, but it won't execute. Only these variables will. So why is that? Because the function needs to be called. So why isn't the function being called? Because well, we haven't called it yet. So script. Not parent, not touch. Now touched is a built-in function that works no matter if can collide or is false or true. So just know that. Now this is an automatic function that's called when the player touches the brick or whatever. So script out parent, which is the, the brick itself. And then local player equals game out players get player from character let's go ahead and hit that like button while we're at it if you're watching this video you might want to give it a old pause to copy down this code and uh, give it a little like while we're at it yeah but I, I have noticed a lot of likes uh, like five averaging about five seven likes video and I do really appreciate that and our view count is going up gain a few more subscribers lately so all of that is really appreciated and and that you guys don't realize how much that means to me <clears throat> so for you it's just like a oh, I'm just gonna hit a like button but for me it's actually really good appreciation um, to show that you guys uh, that I'm actually doing something for you guys I forgot to make this transparent and turn off the settings for that and do apologize so back to the script so this is the script itself so let me let me read this to you so when it's hit we're gonna get the hit and if the hit is a player and this if statement it's like if it's not a player then just end the script automatically then return end and B B is the instance 
dot player dot parent equals player. So now B's parent or B's now a child of player. And then we're going to call this function. Now, whenever you, this is how you call a function. And then this is the argument it will take. Now it automatically takes the player, uh, it automatically takes the player argument, but we do it just in case we're going to play it right here. And that way we're giving this to this function to execute the code. Okay. So this is automatically the time where you're going to want to import the Rishrefs GUI. Now this is going to be a link in the description. All of the scripts are in it. So let me go over it real quick. So where this is going to go actually is we're going to go ahead and put this order GUI into the start sensor. Now make sure to keep the names the same. You can edit the script if you, if you know how to edit the names and everything like that into the script as well. I'm going to go ahead and put these two into the end sensor. Now you can edit the GUIs that that doesn't make a difference and put this in under as a children as a child. I'm sorry, as a script. Now we're going to go ahead and find this order UI. Now let me explain to you how it works. So this is some code that I wrote here and it's, it has a event here. So we're going to be programming that event. And what it does is it takes the, the name. So what you're going to need is the name of what you want. So let's find some toolbox here. I'm going to search up food. And I remember I got mine from a vending machine actually you guys can do your own food you know make this your own your own thing and we're gonna find the let's find the snacks i think right here so bloxy cola cake cheeseburger space sandwich starbucks latte so these for example we can insert the waffle in which brew as well we're gonna go and delete this vending machine uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert these into the replicated storage and with this replicated storage folder named food and insert these items. Now I like to name the cheeseburger cheeseburger because it's way more efficient, but you guys can name it whatever you want. And while we're at the replicated storage, let's go ahead and insert that event remote event called send food. Now do not change the name of this unless you change it in the script. And if you know how to do that, Otherwise, it will not work. So start sensor script is done. So we do not need anything else from that start sensor. We're going to go ahead and fire up that end sensor script now. Now in that end sensor script here, we have nothing. And if we go back to the local script, I'll show you why we need that end sensor script. <clears throat> so this is where we get the replicated storage and stuff like that. And this is some stuff I got for money taking and another way of doing things so we're gonna fire it off what happens here is there's a confirmation UI that pops up and we're gonna make sure this is called cheeseburger so name if you want to configure this for yourself these text box these text boxes have their own text the text doesn't matter it's the name of these text boxes so what it does is these text boxes the name of them have to be the name of the food that they represent so right here, if I take cake and I name it Bloxy Cola, sorry, I've been a little sick lately. If they name, <clears throat> if we name cake Bloxy Cola, this text button, the text may say cake, but it will give Bloxy Cola instead. And it goes based off of what it's, what it is. So this is called food item. Now there's nothing in the replicated storage dot food named food item. So your code will get an error because you're trying to purchase food item, which does not exist. There's nothing in the replicated storage dot food folder that is named food item. So we just have these six right now in there. You guys can add, take away as many as you want. These will be in the link description below. So thank you for that. So replicated storage here. And what it does is, is it makes a table of all these buttons. And every time a button is clicked, it adds the price. <clears throat> to everything and it prints the total price at the bottom right here and that's in the output that's just what i set up here we can go table insert food order and as you guys can see you can pause the video now go and subscribe or like if it's you guys it's first time at the channel and you can read this code and you can see what everything does but without further ado let's get on to that end sensor script so the end sensor script we're going to automatically start off by saying order ready Remember, this end sensor script is this part. 
It's the part at the end at the window. And if we can get this video up to about five five likes, more than five likes, I'll drop my next video. Now, seeing for the next video, we can add a tire customization shop, tire smoke customization shop. So uh, insert some remodels into it. And when you go there, it can find the, the tire smoke and it'll change the color of the tire smoke. And like in Grand Theft Auto V. So we can say order ready equals false. That's indicating a new bool value. Now I'm gonna add a comment here so you guys can know I recommend adding <clears throat> excuse me adding this event comment right here and you guys are probably thinking well what if someone else comes what if somebody orders and they don't what happens if they don't order and they go up to the second part and they go ahead and want to take someone's order well they can't and I'll, I'll tell you why so anytime you add right here is a table with the curly brackets this is a table so Roblox will automatically recognize that as a table so what we're doing is we're gonna send a custom folder fabricated storage that send food this is the event that we had server event You know, peel our folder equals instance. So this is what we're. This is what you need to pay attention to, and especially when you script a multiplayer game, is that each player needs to have their own unique thing. So this is on survey event. Now on survey event is being called right here. It's fire server. Make sure these are the same. So this yes confirmation will take whatever they ordered, and it will send it through the server. And it will be, let's just say we're playing baseball or a catching game. And basically it's being thrown all the way through the game. And it's being caught by the end sensor. <clears throat> and it's being caught by the end sensor. So that's how that's going to work. And this on server event is basically like the mitt and it, or the glove. And it's being caught there. So we're going to go and create a folder, instance.new.folder. And the parent is going to be the script out parent, which is this block right here. And the folder's name is going to be, now this is important, order for space dot dot dot, or two dots, I said three, player name dot name. Current name equals player dot name. And we're gonna do for i. We're gonna do a for loop in pairs. And we're gonna parse this food order. Do v dot parent equals peel our folder. And what the heck, Rishraf, did we just do right now? So what we just did was we created a on server event function. And what this on server event function will do is, sorry, and what it will do is when they order, so this food order <clears throat> is being caught by this script and it's creating a folder. Then the folder's parent's going to be the end sensor, and the folder's name is going to be order for player's name. And notice, now I want you guys to notice something. When we fire the server, it only has one argument. But when we catch the server event, it has two. And why is that? Because when you automatically send, an, send it, it'll have, since it's a local script and it's a fire server, the player will automatically be the first argument. So any argument, so if I just wanted the player, I can remove this. But this is technically, any argument that you put here is the second argument. And the second argument is the food order. Now, for the IV in pairs, 
and we're going to search the food order. We're going to search the order. And for every order and for every food in the order, we're going to set that food parent to the player's folder. So that food that they ordered will now be taken from the replicated storage and put into their custom folder that they have. That way they, it prevents them from ordering twice or from someone taking their order because it searches for their name in the folder. And someone would have to have the same exact username for, as you to have your order, but we all know you can't have the same exact username. So that's how that works. Any questions, you guys can just leave a comment below and I'll answer them. I normally answer within about an hour actually because I have the notifications on, which is pretty handy. And we're going to name another function. Remember, functions cannot be called or will not execute if they're not called. We're going to find first child order. And I'm not going to say scripting is easy because it's actually fairly, it's not hard. If you just, if you just, like how I learned is I just kept scripting and I just learned it. It's fairly easy. It's like you're speaking English. You're basically talking to the computer. Equals player. And this is the same thing we actually did in the start sensor script. You guys can just copy and paste it here. So I do appreciate all of your comments and your suggestions. We have our, I have a lot of things I wanted to tell you guys that I'm going to be creating uh, from weapon shops to slot machines to a whole bunch of stuff that I can't think of. I have a whole notebook that I fill out in school of all the ideas. I got like 10, <clears throat> sorry about that, 10 ideas to um, about like 10 things that I still have that I need uh, to do on the channel it's just i've been really sorry lately the exams in school and stuff and you know with the started school year it's it's really tough that's why i only do it really on the weekends and then being sick on top of it really isn't good for the youtube video but uh thank you for watching my channel now this is going to be one of my longer videos but it's also going to be one of my better videos so I do apologize. You guys can just skip forward and pause the code. But I, when I type, I just want to explain everything so you guys can actually learn. So this is what this is going to do. If they have order, in, if their order is in progress and they don't have the current GUI that says wait for food. And on top of that, and they don't have the complete GUI when that you get from that you do get from completing everything, which is called finish order. Yeah, and basically, if you if all three of these things exist, go ahead and press then. And I like Roblox Studio Code because it's like speaking English and not. I mean, that's as easy as it gets, especially compared to C Sharp. And this is right here, we're going to say. Now, this right here, I want to add a comment for you guys, is this is where we give the weight for food GUI. And there we go. Wait, you eyes up, parent. Oh. Uh, player GUI. I was actually looking on, um, I was reading about the 
random wait times and stuff and I was up last night trying to get this video ready because this was not working at all it was it was taking order but it wasn't giving the food and then at one point it was just giving the food without even taking an order and just giving them random items at one point which is really weird um so this is the random wait time right here and I'll show you guys how to wait you on. So what this random wait does is when they pull up, they get the wait, please wait for your food, and it waits between between five and thirty seconds. So pick your custom seconds to wait. So if I change this to like ten uh, and I change this one to like sixty, and then it would have to wait seconds between 10 and a minute uh, but for these purposes um, for the player to not get bored at the drive-thru we're just gonna do about five between five and thirty seconds to wait once we wait that time we're gonna remove our wait GUI and after we do that we're gonna add an I'm gonna add a comment for you guys wait GUI is gone and once the wait GUI is gone, the order ready equals true. <clears throat> that means their order, it's really simple. Their order is ready. Now you guys can see that I do not have a function named give, give food. So let's create one. Give current folder. Now this is, as you may have guessed it, giving the food here. And we're gonna f now pay attention here. We named now when we give the food. We named it order for space dot dot current name now this current name is going to be the player now you scroll up here current name equals player dot name and what do we do here order for player dot name so that's going to work guaranteed and after that we're going to say if current folder now we're going to say if we can find the current folder like if the player has ordered at this point which if we've gone, if we've done the given getting ready fun function and the give GUI function, then pretty sure. But if they do have a current folder for this player, if there is food for, because they can just submit an order, not even order anything. And if they do have an order for this, and then we're gonna repeat wait. Now you can do one second. This is how many times. This is how many seconds in between waits. I like to do two, uh, if I do zero, or if I do one, it it tends to lag the game a little bit. So a safe bet is probably two until order ready equals true. Equal, equal, true. And for another for loop, IV in pairs, we'll do now this is this argument right here, which I'm currently typing at, is for IV and pairs parsing, it's getting the information I should say from whatever is inside these parentheses. So current folder is the folder that has all of the food in it, and we put the food in it earlier with that event. So when we give the food, or when we have the food in the folder now we're gonna search for that food in the t inside the folder oh why did I say get folder get children do I'm gonna go game dot replicated storage dot food find now V now when you do for loops V I don't worry about I, but V is always what we're finding. So for everything inside of current folder, it's going to be named V. 
it's going to be called V. So V, find first child. If you guys think this is hard, don't worry. You'll, you'll get it. Trust me. We're going to find V.name because we're going to find... So whatever's inside this folder, whatever's in here, now we're going to search replicated storage for it. And now we're going to find the replicated storage food. And now we're going to clone that food item. Oh, why did I, I just wrote food item? Clone. Now we're going to find that. And that clone's parent equals PLR wait for child backpack. And this is exactly where we give it. V dot parent equals nil. This is also another way of saying command destroy. I just like to do v dot parent dot nil because it's very easy. Destroy food in folder. Or destroy the folder. I'm sorry. Destroy the folder. I'm sorry. Destroy the food. What am I doing? Folder. And after we've given everything, and after that, we're going to go and call the give GUI again. And that way, it can execute that again. And if order in progress equals true, then it can do all that. And it's going to go finish order right here, finish order. And it's going to go and do all that stuff. And it's going to find their order in progress boolean. And it's going to destroy that. And then on to the last function of the video. It's going to be script up parent. Now we have all these functions written and we have an on server event. And the on server event creates the folder automatically. But how else will these be called? By the touched function of the player. hit and it's going to be the same thing that oh that we just did local PLR oops go and feel free to pause the video to like it and copy down this code fully customizable you guys can add a money taking system I'm actually going to create a few more videos that involve a money taking system so you guys can go ahead and see right there If the player equals no, and if player find first child, and you kind of have to work as when you code, you have kind of have to view what the player is viewing. So this is when they hit. Now, if their order in progress is true, it's kind of confusing, but. And then this is where we'll just give the player a GUI saying that they need that they need to place an order before pulling up to this window. So there we go. That's our script, and you guys should automatically be proud of yourself. Even though you're watching a YouTube video, just be proud of yourself that you fully understand this. And if you don't understand it, go and rewind the video to. And I'll, I'll probably be explaining everything at one point, but if you do not, I'll go and summarize it. So replicated storage, got all that, finishing order table. Just just go and read the code, and we'll start from what happens. So when I touch this, if I have an order in progress, we're going to go ahead, and we should be calling a function here. We're going to call that function there, and we're going to send this argument. After we give getting ready function, if the player has an order in progress and this argument stuff, then we're going to give them the wait. And once that wait is done, we're going to give them their food because they've done waited for their food because it was being made in the kitchen. So let's just first say. And after we give them their food function, we're going to create the folder with their name, or we're going to find the folder with their name. And if they do have a folder, it means if they do have an order, we're going to go and find the stuff inside that folder and give all those food items to them. And then we're going to destroy those food items, and eventually that folder will not exist anymore. 
And once that folder does not exist, we're going to go and give GUI. And we're going to find the order in progress. If they do have it, still is true. Then we're going to give them the finishing order GUI right here. And we're going to say we're going to find their order in progress. We're going to destroy that. So that way it prevents the game and it prevents the functions from calling again and saying that, oh, well, they have an order in progress still. And just overall infinite loop and bugging our game. We're going to wait eight seconds and we're going to remove the GUI that says, thank you for ordering. Please pull forward. And thank you for your, or whatever it says, please pull forward. So that is our script, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the local script inside uh, the GUI. So only three scripts for this whole giant ordering system, a drive through system, I should say. You guys can test it out. Everything should work. Well, it's going to work. Otherwise, just watch this video. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video. Do ahead and leave a thumbs up. And I noticed that you guys have been leaving thumbs up, so you guys do like these videos. All right, guys, so I did go to test this, and we did not finish completing this. I'm sure one of you guys caught that in the when in the process of watching this video. So order in progress. And make sure you do have your, exactly right here, make sure you do have your spelling in order. Because if you do not, then that would be an issue. So, otherwise guys, thank you so much for watching this video. i like to thank all my subscribers and everyone who supports me. Thank you for those likes. I'm going to be dropping a customization shop pretty soon. Do comment what you guys want. Turn on those post notifications below. And go ahead and subscribe. Listen.